Always good to follow uh, my friend from Delaware, Captain, Navy Captain Carper, Vietnam vet, naval aviator, the whole work. So it's an uh, honor to serve with him on EPW and other committees. So thank you, my good friend from Delaware. Madam President, I call up my amendment number 5192 and ask that it be reported by number. The clerk will report. The Senator from Alaska, Mr. Sullivan, proposes an amendment number 5192. Madam President, after World War II, European leaders looked to the United States to help heal a fractured world and to help provide safety against increasing communist Russian aggression. As Winston Churchill said, quote, there I sat with the great Russian bear on one side of me with paws outstretched and on the other side, the great American buffalo. Well, the buffalo prevailed, NATO prevailed, and the world's most successful and enduring military alliance was born. In 1995, 1949, the Senate ratified the NATO treaty by a vote of 82 to 13. President Truman was quoted at the signing ceremony of the NATO treaty by saying, quote, in this pact, we hope to create a shield against aggression and the fear of aggression. For us, war is not inevitable, he continued. Men with courage and vision can still determine their own destiny. They can choose slavery or freedom, war or peace. The treaty we are signing here today is evidence of the path they will follow. That was when President Truman signed the first NATO treaty. And indeed, Madam President, since the formation of NATO, no world wars have broken out. No country that is a signatory of NATO has been invaded by another country's military forces. In fact, the only time NATO's Article 5, which is the pillar of the alliance, which states that an attack on one is an attack on all, was invoked was actually after the terrorist attacks on America on 9-11. Our allies came to our help to ensure Afghanistan wouldn't harbor terrorists. And we appreciate that help. We appreciate it deeply from our NATO allies. Madam President, NATO, however, is more than just a military alliance. It is a group of countries with shared values and beliefs and a commitment to the principles of democracy. All of this, in addition to the military alliance, is the heritage of NATO. President Ronald Reagan summed it up succinctly in a speech to our NATO allies in 1983. Quote, what do the Soviets mean by words like democracy, freedom, and peace? Not, I'm sorry to say, what we mean. Replace the word Soviet with Russia, and the sentiment unfortunately holds true today. We see the antithesis of these democratic values and shared beliefs of NATO being played out in real time before us in the streets of Ukraine, where Vladimir Putin is leading a brutal assault on Ukraine, Russia's democratic neighbor, and committing atrocities, horrible atrocities, against the brave people of that country. As both President Truman and Reagan remarked, members of the NATO alliance are like members of the same house and the same family the house and the family of democracy. So today, the U.S. Senate will welcome the nations of Sweden and Finland 
into the NATO family. Like any family, we may not agree on everything, but when it's most important, we will have each other's back. That is the essence of NATO and the core reason for its success. Neither Russia nor any other country will be able to invade Sweden or Finland now as they become members of NATO without its NATO allies coming to their support. Of course, Finland has experienced the Russian invasion in 1939, where without the help from other nations, its greatly outnumbered, brave Finnish army fought off over one million Russian forces for three months. But that won't happen again to Finland. And it won't happen to Sweden. They won't be alone now. We welcome these countries' commitment to freedom and their advanced professional militaries, which will make NATO stronger. And to Finland and Sweden, no longer will you be working with NATO, you will now be working in and part of the greatest defense alliance in history. So welcome to these great countries. As Churchill once said, there's only, thing, there's only one thing worse than fighting with allies, and that is fighting without them. So Madam President, I strongly support the inclusion of these two great nations, Sweden and Finland, into the NATO alliance. Important occasions like this are also an opportunity to reflect on the obligations of membership, not just for these new NATO members, but for all NATO members. And on the heels of the Russian invasion and annexation of Crimea in 2014, the heads of state and representatives of the then 28 member countries who made up NATO attended a very important summit a NATO summit in Wales. There they agreed upon a common goal for all NATO members that they would spend a minimum of 2% of their gross domestic product on defense by 2024. This 2% of GDP NATO defense spending goal has been strongly supported for decades by American administrations, both Republican and Democrat. Presidents Bush, Obama, Trump, and now President Biden. At the time in 2014 of the NATO summit in Wales, 10 of the 28 members of NATO met that 2% guideline. Now, eight years later in 2022, the 30 NATO country members, we only have eight of those 30 meeting that 2% threshold. I have a chart here, lays out the 2% goal, who's above it, Who's below it? It's many other countries besides the ones that are listed there, Madam President. But the bottom line is, since Wales and that important commitment, there's not been much progress in NATO on this shared goal and commitment. Now, I am a very strong supporter of NATO and a very strong supporter of the U.S. military. And I want NATO to endure for decades to come. But alliances can't endure if shared commitments and shared burdens are not met. This is particularly true for democratic alliances like NATO. There must be a sense 
among the citizens of such countries that all are pulling their weight for the collective defense of the alliance, for the collective defense of each other. So as I mentioned at the outset, Madam President, I'm calling up an amendment to the resolution. My amendment is to make this commitment clear. It is to announce the U.S. Senate's expectation for all NATO members, the United States, existing members, and now new members, expectations on what has already been agreed to by each NATO country and its citizens. The amendment is simple. It states the following. The Senate declares that all NATO members should spend a minimum of 2% of their gross domestic product on defense and 20% of their defense budget on major equipment, including research and development, by 2024, as outlined in the 2014 Wales Summit Declaration. That's it. It's a simple amendment, Madam President, and I hope it can pass in the next hour by voice vote. Let me conclude with this. A robust, expanded NATO with Finland and Sweden and as new members is needed now more than ever, especially given the brutal invasion of Ukraine by Russia. We need to fully understand the broader implications of this invasion. We have entered a new era of authoritarian aggression led by Russia and China's dictators who are increasingly isolated and dangerous, driven by historical grievances, paranoid about their democratic neighbors, and willing to use military force and other aggressive actions to crush the citizens of such countries. These dangerous dictators, Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping, are increasingly working together to achieve their aggressive goals. We must wake up to the fact that this new era of authoritarian aggression will likely be with us for decades. We need to face it with strategic resolve and confidence. The United States has extraordinary advantages relative to the dictatorships of Russia and China if we are wise enough to utilize and strengthen them. Our global network of allies, our lethal military, our world-class supplies of energy and other natural resources, our dynamic economy, and most important, our democratic values and commitment to liberty. Xi Jinping and Putin's biggest weakness and vulnerability is that they fear their own people. We should remember this and exploit this in the months and years ahead. NATO, as an alliance, encompasses so many of these powerful comparative advantages. A lethal military, a global network of allies, dynamic economies, and the power of democratic values and the commitment to liberty. We should all welcome and celebrate the addition of Finland and Sweden to the NATO alliance, but we should also use this moment to recognize the seriousness of the authoritarian threats on the rise all over the world and recommit ourselves, all NATO members, to our obligations of collective defense moving forward. Madam President, I ask that in another section of today's record, I ask that unanimous consent that Senator Cornyn's statement be included in full. Without objection. I yield the floor.